The Unshackled Waves, episode 100. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. We've got another interview show for you today. The Queensland election campaign is now in full swing as what, what is shaping up to be a three-way contest between the Labor government, the Liberal National Party and One Nation. Nobody is confident in predicting an outcome. The Unshackled is aiming to bring you as much coverage of the campaign as possible, which includes our election night live stream on Saturday the 25th of November. Today we'll be speaking with one of the candidates in this election, uh, Shanju Lin, who is standing as an independent for the seat of uh, Bundaba, which is located in the city of Ipswich, which is in Brisbane's west. She was originally announced as a One Nation candidate for the seat in December 2016, and much was made of the fact that she would have been the first Asian candidate for the party. However, she was disendorsed in January this year after she made a post on Facebook about a gay couple who'd been wrongly accused of child abuse, where she stated that gays should be treated as patients. Despite this setback, she was encouraged by the support she received in a local community where she is the organiser of World Harmony Day Festival, and so she decided to still run in the election. I thought it would be good to invite her on the show to discuss her platform, the issues in this campaign, her community work, and her experience and thoughts on One Nation. Sean, welcome to the show. Hi, team. Thank you for having me. Now, I'll start off with your uh, election campaign. You're an uh, independent uh, candidate, so I'll get you to talk a bit about uh, uh, your platform and why you're running. Uh, my platform, do you mean independent or...? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I decided to run independent. As you, you know that, you know, uh, I made a comment for this gay profile on Facebook and then I was disendorsed by One Nation. So, you know, but I was going to run Jordan, but, you know, Pastor Phil Kavlev uh, said to me he's a plan to run as well. So, I mean, I said to him, there's no meaning that I stand against him. So I said, well, I will go back to Bandemba. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, that, that's how I decided to run Bandemba. Yeah, and um, have you, obviously, uh, running as an independent, it's a, a big ask, because um, obviously you don't have the resources of a, a major party uh, behind you, but have you got uh, much support in your local community? Uh, yes, well, I'm getting my uh, volunteer together. Uh, of course, I would need, uh, you know, many more to put their hand up to her to, to support my campaign, yeah. And uh, what are the uh, issues uh, that, that you're campaigning on, such as like what what policies would you like to see introduced at a, at a state level? Right, you know, um, the, mo the, 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 the most worrying me is, is, you know, our country has been sold and that, that leading to the high cost of a power you know queensland has the most highest power bill in the in the world and this is five six times more you know than we usually pay since this uh labor government uh take all, i mean take you know take power from 2012 i mean 2015. so and then you know um and it's gone up a lot as well. And that's all because we, the government opened the border for, you know, like uh, the government allowed 10 year multiple entry visa for Chinese people. And they come here, they can buy houses, they can buy our harbors, they can buy our uh, businesses, and they're just taking over everything. That make me very worry that we're gonna lose our power our country to them and as we as everybody know they are dictator country they have a dictator regime and now the student come here they're studying our new university they control our lecture university lecturer what they can say what they can say 
and which you know it's controlling our freedom of speech so we are gradually losing our country also our freedom well, it sounds like the, want... the issues up in uh, Qu uh, Queensland, you mentioned uh, energy and housing affordability. Um, I don't know um, qu uh, the issues in Queensland too well, but it sounds like you're facing the, the same problems as uh, that we are down here in Melbourne and also in our other major cities. You know, from, from, you know, from what I'm talking to people and also the local resident. You know, they find it very hard to to pay for the high rent. You know, it's all because the foreign investment here. They 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 bought how many percent? Forty percent of our properties, and then you know, causing the price up, and that make hardship for all our uh, citizens. You know, it doesn't matter is in Queensland or in other state. You know, we we have the highest rate cost and power bill in the world. And it certainly seems Anna, that um, in, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, she's still proceeding with that. Uh, I think she wants a 50% renewable energy target, just like uh, federal labour. She's still full steam ahead on this renewable energy bandwagon. You know, I don't think it's, the high power, the high cost of the power is related to this you know, renewable energy. I mean, it's all. Be I believe it's a, because of privatizing our state businesses to to foreign investors, and so they control our the order price and you know our economic. So it it's it's all because the privatizing of the business the state businesses. We should have our state businesses. You know, so the government have control you know, for the for the price. But at the moment the government has no control. And why do you feel that the major parties have um, failed Queensland? Obviously uh, Labour's under Anastasia Palaszczuk has only been in for one term before that. Uh, obviously there was the LNP under uh, Campbell Newman. Uh, uh, why, uh, why do you think that they're not the answer? Well, you know, when they are stay in power for long, how, you know, the two party prefer, prefer if if the voters don't break that cycle, the corruption will always be there, you know. So when when things getting bigger, the cycle getting bigger, there's more corruption there. So if we can have a balance of a power in a parliament, that will reduce that opportunity for them to be corrupt. And also these are Chinese communists, they, they corrupt our government as well. You know, they, 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 they bribe our major parties so, you know, they can sell our country to, to, to them. And that's their plan. They, they are using money instead of a bullet to invade our country. And people love it. They're falling into their trip. This is a very serious, you know, um, uh, issue that we are facing. But nobody can see that um, the cause of the, you know, and the future, what kind of future we're going to face in. But this is their scheme. They through um, uh, China Free Trade Agreement. They they are aimed to take over the world, not just Australia. Yeah. And uh, obviously, it's it's difficult for uh, minor parties or independents to get the balance of power in Queensland because it doesn't have an uh, upper house. So often, what happens is. Uh, if a major party gets majority of seats, they can just do pass, pass whatever they want uh, unchecked. Well, that's right. So the system has to be changed. Yeah. And then, um, well, but again, the powers is in the voters' hand. So, you know, I really like to call for the voters to, you know, to be more careful with what they vote and to break the uh, two party preferred system and voting for minor parties and independent so that we can have a balance of a power in the parliament so we can have a better change to make a better change for 
everybody, not just you know, what people like uh, me or pastor uh, feel collective. We are standing for the people, not for ourselves. You gained a lot of mainstream media attention when you were uh, announced as a uh, One Nation candidate back in uh, December uh, last year, and much was made of the fact that you would have been the first um, Asian candidate for uh, One Nation. Uh, however, uh, as uh, we touched on briefly at the beginning, you were uh, disendorsed. Um, uh, by the party uh, because they objected to a, a Facebook post that you made about um, uh, a, a, about a, a gay couple who were accused of um, child abuse, which was interpreted as uh, homophobic. Um, I'll start from the beginning. Um, why did you first decide to get involved in One Nation? Well, I, you know, um, I support what Pauline Hanson said it back in, back to um, uh, twenty years ago, and everything she said, it's all happened now, and we we are actually in danger, as she said, are we going to lose our country, you know, for 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 the Chinese communist, and also for, um, you know, these uh, uh, refugees that might um, coming from. You know, Islam background, and they, you know, terrorist at attack as part of their teaching. Um, so, what I think of what she said is all right. So that's why I I start to, you know, I decide to um, apply for candidacy with One Nation. So her 1996 comment that uh, Australia was. Uh in danger of being swamped by Asians, that didn't offend you as a person, person of Asian background? Oh, well, you know, there's a good Asian and there's a, a greedy Asian. So I am on the good side of Asian and the greedy side is the Chinese communist who, are take, who wants to take over the world. So, you know, there's different uh, agents. And I think by now people can see what's happening now. And I wouldn't take too much notice for uh, what um, Pauline Hansen said back to 20 years ago because everything she said is right. And that's what I'm looking at. And I want, I want to take our country back as much as she does. So, you know, uh, our goal is the same. Yeah. Now let's talk about the Facebook post that got you uh, disendorsed. So it was about a, a gay couple who'd been accused of child abuse, which was later confirmed they were uh, cleared of that. And uh, obviously there was already a lot of media scrutiny on you. And so when this post emerged, the, the media was only too happy to report it. Um, you said that um, uh, because, uh, that this couple, uh, gay, should be uh, treated as uh, patients. Uh, why did you decide to make the post? Well, look, when I see the post, I was so angry. All I think about is the victims, the, the, the boys who are raped in that case, you know? Um, and that also made me think about the uh, safe school programs that in bad, I mean, in our school, and I was so worried how many gay people file is that program going, going to groom out, you know, from that program. So it just, and, and gay community, they always say they are uh, born in that way. Okay, now, if you're born in that way, if you don't have a medical consultation, how would you know you're born in that way or not? So that's why... I see, I'm in the comment, you know, they, they should have a treated patients or have a medical con consultation to, to, to find out if they're really born in that way. Yes. That's, and, you know, all, I'm, all I think about is those victims. And there are so many other cases. This is not only case. Yeah, a gay pedophile case. Well, let's talk about the, the aftermath of it because... Um, it was interesting that you were not the, the only um, well, One Nation candidate to, um, you know, be uh, criticised by the media. However, you were 
uh, singled out and, and disendorsed from the party. There was also, to my memory, in the, the WA election, there was a, a another candidate, I, I believe her name was Michelle Myers, who said that um, uh, gays use uh, Nazi mind control tactics, yet uh, she wasn't uh, disendorsed. So uh, why, why was the response to, to your post uh, so different from uh, One Nation? Uh, well, because I think the the media or lefties media, major majority, so they will stand for the gay community rather than stand for a person who are care caring about the children. So you know that and which is quite sad, really. You know, um, but it's okay. That that is what's the world like now. That's why I'm standing to make a change. Uh, and so, why do you, uh, do you, uh, why do you think was it because one, uh, one nation they were uh, just scared of the the criticism, or do you th or was there um, something else behind the scenes that led to your disendorsement? Okay, now the James Ashby contacted me when I was having holiday overseas. And he contacted me through uh, messenger. He said he he is a sick of uh, he is a, he had enough with this uh, media keep uh, kept asking him about my uh, gay comment. Uh, I mean, uh, my comment about LGBT. And what I posted is the uh, you know all the all the um, you know uh, 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 about the crime conducted by well con or issues LGBT which is you know it shouldn't be happen for example like a, uh, there's another case I posted about a Queensland gay couple they are adopting these are uh, these boys and they play him around and then they also lend him to uh, their friends and um, internationally you know I I don't know if they sell him in the in the in a in a gay gay community or whatever but that's not only the only case. There's another case that when I had an interview with ABC, uh, and I, they, that the reporter said, "Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean." The worst uh, case they they had is the inter investigating a, a a case that would for a two months old uh, baby has been raped by their adopted par uh, gay parents. So you know this kind of a a problem it's everywhere it's not just one or two it's more you know so I, I that's why I you know I, I just very I could understand why people are looking at my comment rather than the the the, ch the children the boys who are the, the victims you know yeah now you said after your disendorsement, uh, you still supported, you know, Pauline and uh, what she uh, stands for, which is uh, it, it, that, that's the story of quite quite a lot of um, uh, X One Nation candidates is that they still like Pauline Hanson, but just don't like the the way the the, the party is uh, run. And this was the the problem with the party during its first incarnation in the late nineties. Uh, do you think that um, the influence of a person such as James Ashby is uh, uh, causing uh, problems with the party because there have been a number of other candidates, One Nation candidates in this Queensland election who've been dis disendorsed. Definitely. I just think uh, James Ashby is uh, ruling the party, he's running the show. And, you know, I think uh, Pauline Hanson is just, uh, she needs to rely on someone. And, but she rely on the wrong person, you know. That that is a pity. Um, if she could have a more a right person to help her, I'm sure she, her party will grow. It just when I was endorsed by One Nation, there's so many Asians support supported One Nation as well, you know, which is a good sign, you know, which which is a uh, united everybody more people to support one nation and you know which could lead to a very positive uh way and to change our country to 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 get our country back 
But unfortunately, you know, after my disendorsement, there's so many people say, oh, they were going to prepare to join One Nation because of me. And after that, they decide not because my uh, disendorsement uh, just put them off. So, you know, that, which is, a, which is a pity. I really think I can make a lot of uh, impact for One Nation. Yeah. And uh, how do you see the, the future of the party? Uh, obviously, uh, in this uh, election, people are predicting One Nation will do well. It could win up to a dozen seats and hold the, the balance of power uh, post-election. But given that we've talked about these uh, internal uh, problems, do you, uh, where do you see the party going in the future? Well, I mean, James Esby is disliked by all members. I would say all members, right? I haven't heard any single One Nation member says they like him. So if they are dozens of uh, candidates who successfully uh, won the seats, I mean, I... I don't think they would take too much about James Ashby. They would just do their own thing and, you know, to make changes for, for our, our country. So I wouldn't worry about too much about James Ashby uh, later on. Um, so, but if James Ashby continue to rule the party, I would, you know, be very worried about the party's future. I, do, I don't have anything to against the, the policy of one nation. I, as I say, I, I always support what Polly Henderson said back in 20 years ago because I can see myself it, that that is the truth. We are in danger. Our country, we are going to lose our country to Chinese communists. Uh, after uh, your disendorsement uh, from One Nation, there was a lot of ridicule of um, you and, um, you know, saying that you were, you know, a fringe person, but you're actually quite a uh, pillar of your local community. Um, for example, um, you're the organiser of uh, World Harmony uh, Day, and obviously, as we mentioned, you've got a lot of support for your campaign in uh, your community. So can you talk a bit about... Um, yeah, uh, your activities. Right. Yes, I um I formed this uh, I uh, founded this um World Harmony Society back in 2012. So you know our aim is to help, uh, you know to connect multicultural community and the mainstream community. So I think I think if I put up an event, big event, so everybody can join together and they can understand each other's culture. And that will bring everybody together, and that will create more, you know, uh, more harmony for our society. That's my aim. And also, we, you know, we like to let people know not all culture are good culture. For example, the Chinese Communist culture, they, they're, they're based in lie. You know, we don't want that culture. So we need people to understand there's not a, all culture is the same. And also, child marriage, genital mutilation forced abortion. That's not good culture. We don't want to that that kind of things are happening in our community. And our goal also to uh, be, uh, uh, aiming to helping the community to raising funds for themselves because you know funding is always the problem for organizations. People are joining organization because they want to serve the community. So they they you know we want to create the opportunity to help all organization that's why we uh, provide a free stores for non-profit organization to fundraise to help their fundings yeah would you say that like obviously some as i might call uh the world harmony society a uh, multicultural uh event but it's it's from from what you're saying to me it's more about promoting a uh, good culture that you know obviously uh, as you mentioned, not all cultures are equal, but there's certainly, uh, apart from Western culture, there are you know many other you know good cultures around the world, just as there are bad cultures. Exactly, that's that's what it is. That's why we are 
aiming for intercultural understandings. So, you know, for, for to understand each other's culture, not only understand the good culture, we also need to identify the bad culture for each each cultural background. So, you know, so and then we will adapt the good culture, but we have to stop the bad cultures. Has your political activity over the past year uh, affected the uh, success of the World Harmony Festival that you've been managing to build up? Well, um, that that was, you know, the funding was being cancelled for last year's World Harmony Day Festival, but this year, uh, and then, you know, they're trying very hard for us to get the venue back again, they, you know, uh, but now we got the venue and they will, go, they will be going through, they will be happening again. So, you know, we, our children's festival uh, back in a couple of weeks ago, it was being very successful. So I don't think, that, you know, uh, people would uh, uh, worry about what happened with my, you know, and, and, and sh they shouldn't, they shouldn't connect my political um, life with my uh, the the com the organization because it's totally and and World Harmony Society is a non political organization. We are aiming to helping communities. We are not, you know, in, in the in the event I don't talk about my political activities. You know, I, I haven't mentioned anything. We don't have our sign there, my political sign there, uh, or fly there. I have nothing about nothing about my political campaign. Yeah, it's just, it's different issue. So. It's sad in today's society how, well, it's it's mainly only uh, people who have right wing views. It doesn't matter, you know, what other work they do, you know, for uh, for the community or um, or in uh, other uh, areas. If they have the you know wrong views in the the eyes of you know the the media and the the cultural elite, then automatically you know they they believe that they should be you know cast out of society, which is you know quite quite a sad development exactly exactly right why they have to c connect my uh you know that the organization the charitable organization which is doing good things for the community why they have to shut you know try to destroy it what they do is they're trying to destroy it you know so i mean and and it's a separate issue they shouldn't connect my political um uh activity with the organization it's totally different you know, just like, a, you know, uh, I mean, it's it, like a, all politicians, they have their own belief and, and they, they have a family. You don't go to the, you know, if they don't like their idea, you don't go to destroy their family, is it? No, no. Right? So I, I think these people are very selfish people. Mm. They're just selfish. They, they want everything in their way. Well, it sounds like they've, uh, as they try to do with most people, they did their best to, you know, destroy your uh, work. But it, but it sounds like that you've got, you know, a strong uh, community behind you, and you know they did help you, you know, persevere, and you're you're still uh, organizing your events and you know appearing at uh, community events. Yes, as, I mean people love to attend our event, and our, you know the performing groups, the uh, community group, uh, organization, they all being very supportive with our for our event, and they all you know shows their appreciation that I spend time to organize the event, you know, so they can um, have all the community coming together, and they appreciate what I am doing for them. Yeah, it's, that's more appreciation shown to me than before, you know. <laughs> So I think they do understand what I'm doing. Yeah. Now you've already been uh, quite critical of the influence of the the Chinese Communist Party in Australia. Now you're originally from Taiwan, which the yes. um, uh, People's Republic of China have made it clear that they would like to uh, annex. Um, why do you see them as such a threat here in Australia? Well, because they're controlling people's, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of belief, they killing their own peoples, you know, like a Tiananmen Square and the student Tiananmen uh, Massacre. Um, the student is only asking for democracy, democratizing the country, and they got killed. 
And now, uh, and then also, you know, forced abortion. They they have this policy, uh, one child policy. Now probably changed to two child policy, but it doesn't matter. One child, two child policy. The the access, you know, access the exit exit the number. You they will they will force you to get abortion. And there's so many Chinese women that I've been talking to. They say they so. They are so sad when they, you know, they, they, nearly people I'm talking to, they had that experience that they're being forced to get a board because they have a more than one child. So, you know, and then there, there's no freedom of belief. There's so many um, Catholic, ca- Catholic uh, Christians and even the recent uh, Falun Gong practitioners, and they're all persecuted by the Chinese Communist they killed by this Chinese communist. You know, like a recent, the most recent case is that they are harvest organ harvesting the uh, live Falun Gong practitioners or other minority uh, group that uh, uh, are not uh, protest to the, the government. They all being persecuted and they, they their organ is being harvested and, and sold to uh, foreigner who seeking uh, organ transplant in China. So what they did is they, they will recall all the blood, blood, uh, his, I mean, type, and then they put it on the database or whoever want to get organ transplant, they will just go into the database and find a match person and then cut the person beside the room of the, the, the patient and nice and fresh and they on they cut everything they can cut off everything they can and bend the body in the in the in the in the hospital that's what are happening now you know and that link to you know in 2010 i invited a, um, uh, a lawyer human rights lawyer david martas he is investigating this uh, organ harvesting in chi- uh, a chi- the, the case um and then, you know, I invited him to give a uh, three forums in Brisbane. And I was, uh, back then I was an editor of a Depok Time Queensland. So I used the Depok Times name to organize the event. Now, two days before his arrival, our office in Sunnybank in South Side of Brisbane got gunshot. So, you know, they're so scared that their crime is being exposed. So, you know, we don't want, and now they own our harbors. Our government they're then buying our harbors. You know, not just Darwin Pool. Most people know Darwin Pool, not just the part Darwin Pool. Melbourne Pool, Fremantle Pool, Newcastle Pool. It's all, and now they're going to build a Gold Coast Port. So, you know, they, if they're controlling our harbor, they come controlling our border. And as you know, many, many uh, drug or even weapons, you know, coming from China, we lost our security. This is the part that we, and then they, they bought most of our, our farm land, our business. This, why would I get worried about this? You know, people are trying to escape, but now Australia government do accept uh, refugees from China. And now they are setting our country to Chinese communists. I mean, why bother to give a refugee visa to Chinese communists? They are importing the dictatorship, you know. So our government has to wake up. And But I don't think they will. I think the people, the voters, has to wake up. If they, they want our country to be controlled by Chinese communists, they have to think about it because we're going to lose our freedom to them. Well, the attitude of uh, the, our federal governments of both political um, persuasions is that trade with China is always the, the most important thing. So, you know, we get most of our, um, you know, manufactured goods from China and then there's a lot of our, um, you know, agricultural and dairy products which, which go to China. And so a lot of what you're talking about now is, is swept under the carpets by our leaders because for them it's, it's all about... Uh, you know, trade and uh, economy, and so that uh, that's that's their focus. You know, I do think it is our, our leaders. They are very, uh, well, they are very naive. You know, 
Money can't buy anything. Money can't buy freedom. Now, we should import in the skill to make to you know to manufacture for our for, you know um, in our country, not buying good from from our country. We exporting the resources to other country, then buying back at ten times a higher price. Why don't we? Why can't we just keep our resourcing for ourselves and then we develop the skill to make those products? That will provide a lot of job opportunity. And if we can keep our resources, I mean, you know that that, that we can supply our our own own need. We don't have to rely on importing uh, products. So I think is I think the government have to. Uh, focus on uh, innovative uh, strategies, like uh, you know, to, uh, training more more skillful people in for, in our country, rather than rely on other countries. Yeah, to create more job opportunities. And the, the there's already a large uh, Chinese community here in Australia. Do, are are they? As concerned about the influence of the Chinese Communist Party, or uh, has the, have have has the Chinese Communist Party uh, been able to you know infiltrate that community and the the various uh, groups associated with it? You know, there are two groups of a Chinese community. One group is democratic-minded people, so they would they would they don't like what the Chinese Communist Party doing. Another group is they are brainwashed by the Chinese Communist Party. They are more worried about the money. So these people will follow the communist, the the part, Chinese Communist Party. So there are two group of them. Yeah. Because uh, uh, there was also um, the Four Corners episode earlier this year about the the influence of Chinese. Uh, Interests, um, you know, on our politics, and there was the the famous uh, rally for um, China's right in the the South China Sea, which was actually uh, paid for by the uh, f uh, they were paid by the Communist Party. Yeah, I mean, the Chinese Communist Consulate in in Australia, they supporting so many um, project. What they want is to control the to brainwash Australian. So you know they, for example, they 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 give fundings to um, uh, Confucius Institution, which is based in many many schools in the world, and so they they brainwashing our kids, and they providing fundings for Chinese media so they can write whatever the party wants, even they you know even Western uh, media. So all they want is controlling, is brainwashing and the people, which is very dangerous. So, you know, that's another part, another reason I'm really concerned about the, 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 their influence in, in Australia. And we, we talked about our uh, political leaders obviously wanting, uh, believing that trade is uh, most paramount, but there's also been... Um, episodes of espionage with the, the Chinese government uh, hacking our um, uh, national security uh, servers, yet it's our leaders still carry on like business as usual. Exactly. I mean, you know, because they're being bored. It's corruption. And, and people can see it. And this is another reason I'm so worried about Australia as well. You know, that's why I make me uh, standing for for the election, uh, I just want more people to understand uh, the danger that we are facing. You know, so you know, this, our leader have to make a stop. They can't rely on these Chinese communists. They are they economic world. You know, it's not the answer for our our dignity. You know, we're gonna lose our freedom to them, which is you know, money can't buy anything. Well, I've certainly appreciated your insights on this uh, topic because, as I mentioned, it's it's not really a uh, discussion that we have uh, very regularly uh, in Australia. So uh, I'm glad you were able to uh, shed light on it. And uh, thank you for, for coming on today. I know it's a busy time for any candidate and I appreciate you coming on and uh, good luck with the rest of the campaign. Well, thank you for having me. I
And thank you for, you know, giving me this opportunity to clarify the truth to all people, all, all, all Australian people. So thank you so much. Yeah. No worries. It was our pleasure. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. A reminder about our upcoming live stream when the Marriage Law Postal Survey results are released, which will be on Wednesday the 15th of November, and our stream starts at 9am Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, our Queensland Election Night live stream will be on Saturday the 25th of November, so I hope you can join us for both of those. Thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.